welcome to the 2016 Morton Games here in the Irish capital, Dublin. And we know about the Olympic Games coming up. A lady who's been to the Olympic Games, Jessie Barr, I have to ask you first up, your brother Thomas has pulled out the 400 metres hurdles. Big expectations to him up against Jehu Gordon. It's not to be, but just tell us a little bit about the injury. Yeah, I know Thomas is really, really disappointed. He always says the Morton Games is one of his favourite events. Just the Morton crowd has always gotten behind him. Unfortunately, just started the week, picked up just a minor niggle, nothing major, but obviously the big picture is the game at the end of the, uh, like the end of August, so he can't take any chances with this. He doesn't want to push it. He is really disappointed not to have that second go at beating a world champion in front of his home crowd, but like I said, you have to kind of take these these things. And I know he sends his apologies. He's really disappointed. I'm sure he's watching at home now and hoping that that whatever time is ran, he could have been beating it. Beating it. So. One, Jess, thanks very much. I really appreciate you're going to be part of our commentary team and also up there is going to be Dick Hooper and first up Will Downing. Yes, good evening from the 2016 Morton Games. So here's the uh, starting lineup for the men's international pole vault, including the new Irish champion for West Waterford AC, Thomas Houlihan. David Donegan with uh, 17 national titles to his name. Nicola Great Britain. Cameron Walker Shepherd, Jack Phipps. Just missing out. I believe that's for 5.30. So Jeff Cooper of the United States. The season's best 5.60 in qualifying in the US trials, but did a Lavillany in the final. That was a massive shock, as we saw in Amsterdam with Lavillany missing out because obviously what he did was he'd waited for everybody else to go out of the competition and then he went in and he missed out and it could, would have been a goal straight away and in the end it was nothing for the great Frenchman 557 he's going for here and this would be a new meeting record for Jeff Coover it would put him into the lead Coover a 560 man this year and a lifetime best of 568 indoors which also counts that's his overall lifetime best. So, can he set a new meeting record here? Set in 2013 by Bishkoff and Cuts. Here he comes, looking to rewrite history. Not quite. So that was the first attempt at 5.57. So we'll have to give that another go, but uh, really solid try already. To mark the international program, and here's the Men's 800 meters A race organized by the Irish Milers Club. And some good talent in this. Callum Crawford Walker of Annadale Striders, now Tui of Ferrybank AC, Rory Lodge of Kilkenny City Harriers, Killian Kerwin, Rahini Shamrock, Elliot Slade is here from Wales as well, Kevin McGrath, Bohermine, Mark Hoy, who's the pace man, and Kevin Bell here from England also. So away we go, Niall Tui in focus, Lodge, Crow, Crawford, Walker, Tui, Kirk, Kerwin, Slade, Warren, McGrath, Bell, and the paceman is Hoy, way out on the outside, in the blue, and sticking to quite one at the moment is Kevin Bell of England, and when they break, you'd almost think that Bell would be the paceman, it's Kevin McGrath, Barmine, who's also coming out quite spectacularly, and now Bell begins to put the foot down, Mark Hoy leading them out, in the pace, but it's Kevin McGrath in front of the moment. Second place is Joe Warner, and for Wales, in third is Elliot Slade. Yeah, Kevin McGrath is where he wants to be, in touch with the leader and, and yet controlling the race from the front. Joe Warren is on his shoulder, Niall, T Niall Tui is there as well. So the Irish boys are mixing it well. The Welshman in fourth place. Yeah, Mark Hoy leading them out, and uh, he's paced it quite fast here. So it's McGrath who leads. Warren in second place. Still on the inside, Slade of Wales in third. And a little bit of a move from Niall Tui on the outside in fourth place. This could be quite competitive over the final 350. But in the Slovenian colours of Kevin Bell, the Englishman, he's moved up quite well. And Kevin McGrath making a very good race of this as well. Well, for a young man, he's really running well there. He's putting it up to the older guys, the more experienced guys. Niall Tui has moved up into third place. Niall always has great pace, so it'll be interesting to see how this evolves. There goes the Welshman. Come on, feel the noise.
Ladies, it's Elliot Slade who's gone out in front of head of Kevin McGrath here quite brilliantly. Niall Tui looking very competitive too. And Kevin Bell of England back in fourth place. Tui is fighting hard to try and give us an Irish victory straight away. But in the closing straight, here comes Elliot Slade ahead of Kevin McGrath by mean. And Slade is going to do it for Wales. It's been a great sporting summer for them. Slade is going to take this and he's going to win it in 147.69 in second place was Kevin McGrath, Bell up there as well, and Niall Tui did so spectacularly, but Elliot Slade, what a great result, and is that a lifetime best? I think it is. I tell you what, there's a lot of guys got fast times out there. I was looking at Niall Tui and Kevin McGrath. They're probably going to be very close to their personal best, if not better. That was a darn good race, Jesse. Well, that was exceptional. 147.69 in this Irish Miners Club 800 metres A race. I've just got word in my ear. They think Kevin McGrath could have run a national youth record. We need to obviously wait to get the official results. But yeah, if he gets into the 148 stick, do you yeah. reckon that? Oh, I definitely think he's in the 148, as is as in Niall Tui. They were very close. They were tired. And um, the Welshman there, Elliot Slade, he did pull away. And he's delighted with himself, you can see. But it, as I said, it's just a perfect night for middle distance running. There isn't a, a spot of a breeze out there. And it's on nights like that that athletes get rewarded if they're brave. Yeah, and exactly. Elliot Slade was brave. He took that race with 600 gone, 200 metres to go. He took off like he was only doing a 200 metre race. And he really took the bull by your horns. And he, does, he got the result that he deserves. Well, the 800 metres... National youth record, 149.63. It's Elliot Slade winning it for Wales. Lifetime best, 147.70. Kevin McGrath in second place with a new Irish national youth record, beating the 21-year-old Mark. Niall Tui was third, and William Crow of North Sligo was in fourth place. Very good victory for Wales. Definitely a lifetime best for him. He's taken half a second off it and now let's take a look at the pole vault because this is for a new meeting record Coover going for it and he's got it Jeff Coover with a new meeting record in the Morton Games and finally at the third attempt he managed to squeeze over 557 brilliantly done by Jeff Coover He's not very far away from his best outdoor mark of 5 metres 60. Yes, now the men's 800 metres wheelchair, good talent in this. Ben Rowlings, who won three medals in Grisetto in the European Championships IPC. Isaac Towers as well for Great Britain, Sean Frame. And Killian Dunn, Jack Agnew, Patrick Monaghan representing Ireland. Samuel Kolek, a very interesting prospect as well for Poland, who have a very good IPC programme. David Weir, Marcel Hoog, Tatiana McFadden, the fastest of the fastest. As we've seen from uh, Madison de Rosario, the 53s are quite fast as well. So it's Towers, Agnew, Monaghan, Frame, Rollings, Kulik, and Dunn. They're the uh, seven in this, and it's a very solid start by Ben Rollings. Watch out for him. He's in the uh, Great Britain singlet. Remember, there's lots of IPC action at the anniversary games in London tomorrow that you can watch out for, but it looks to be Jack Agnew, who's got off to an absolutely brilliant start in this 800 meters wheelchair race, and the rest are beginning to jostle behind him. Towers trying to uh, come up to the fore, and also in the Great Britain singlet, Ben Rowlings. Remember that the T-54s are more powerful than the 53s, and in the T-30s, that is a cerebral palsy category. But Jack Agnew, well, he impressed very much in the national championships and also in the Corksley Sports. Jack Agnew won at the national championships with Towers in second place and Monaghan in third. And he's looking really good as they come towards the bell, looking for a little bit of a move. Uh, Rowlings is back in fourth place at the moment. Leading the way here is Jack Agnew. Second is Monaghan and in third, looking to move up, I think it's Kolek. Rowlings is in uh, fourth place, but taking away very well is Jack Agnew. Now a little bit of a move coming behind him from Monaghan and really should try and get into lane one there because he might be caught here on the inside. Agnew surely knows that now. Very good movement from Monaghan who's begin to get up in the inside. This is very good work from the two Northern Irishmen and further work from Carla coming on the outside. So it looks like Monaghan and Agnew, the one and two at the moment with Carla coming in behind and 
Rowling's there also, way back in fourth place. But this is very, very good work. Fantastic teamwork the by the Northern lane. Ireland boys, the way they carved it up, which allowed Patrick to pull away from the field. A really, really decisive move with 150 to go, decided all that. That's the win, Patrick Monaghan takes the victory, Jack Agnew in second place, it is Isaac Towers in third, Ben Rowlings is in fourth, Sean Frame is in fifth place. Monaghan's actually, uh, Patrick Monaghan is Rio bound at the moment, he's actually going for the marathon, so maybe that strength that he has for the marathons at longer distances is what held him there at the end, he really came through strong in the last 50 metres. Patrick Monaghan winning the men's 800 metres wheelchair in 148.38 with Jack Agnew in second place and some really good international talent from Great Britain, Isaac Towers and Ben Rowlings, third and fourth respectively. Next race on the track is the Irish Milers Club, 1500 metres. Um, and, and yet another um, team battle between Great Britain and Ireland. The IMC was born out of what was the BMC in, in England and BMC was designed to raise the standard of middle distance running in England, put on specific meets, have pacemakers, encourage people to just try and run faster. And, uh so away we go and all the British uh, Milers Club runners in this are in the yellow and black singlet. So it's Carr, Marr, Campbell, Prentice Landers, McAlemy, Eves, Duffy, Johnson, Pierce, Hines, Dyer, Kyo, Dunleavy, Chesser, Owens, Wilkinson, Field, Hallis, Norman, and the pace man is Harry Purcell right out in front. And the uh, British Miners Club athletes just pushing up straight away. 288 is uh, Jack Hallis, 289, Jack Norman, and just on there uh, outside Emmett Dunleavy of the Irish Miners Club. And they're all wearing the fluorescent green singlets as well as they're being brought through by Purcell, the pace man, it's the uh, BMC leading at the moment with Jack Hallis and uh, Josh Norman are right behind them. And uh, Cameron Field well up in a good position as well, but you can see Owen Pierce and Clonliffe Harriers on the inside as well. Yeah, the BMC lads are very well positioned there as we come up to the 400 meter split, which is 59, 60 seconds, which is about 345 pace. They'll all be quite pleased with that pace. And that's why the pace, what, that's why the field is so strung out because some are running too fast already. But those British guys probably are three, high 340s type people. Harry Purcell's doing a great job out front. He'll surely bring them to 800 meters as well, if not a bit further. But he looks very comfortable floating along there. Good to see him developing out, in, out there in Villanova. Can just confirm for you that Jack Coover has won the international pole vault. He cleared 557 at the third attempt, and that is a new record. Now, Jake Blankenship, I can see, has only one mark to his name so far, a miss at 5 metres 30. So he does still have two attempts in hand, but it's still the British Miners Club who are dominating this very early on as they pass by. It's Hallis, and it's Norman, and it's Field, but still quite high up. The home athlete, Owen Pearce, representing Clonla Parry is very well at the moment. You can see the very, very fluorescent green of the Irish Milers Club still competing. Well, that's actually Kevin Chesser there in, in, say, fifth place, I suppose, fourth place in the race. Harry's done a great job. He's brought them to 900 metres, so they can't give out about the pacemaker. The race is on now. The BMC are occupying the first three places. Hallis, Norman and um, Kevin Chesser, the best of the Irish there in fourth place. Yes, they've congested quite well here. Norman Hallis Field moving up quite well. Kevin Chesser, Richard Owens is there as well. And in the purple, you can see 278 is Neil Johnson. But just on the outside there, uh, Emmett Dunleavy and just moving back a bit is Michael Dyer of North Down. So as they hit the bell, it's three British Miners Club athletes with three Irish Miners Club athletes right behind. This is going to be competitive right to the get-go. Norman Hallis and Wilkinson have dominated this throughout, but now the Irish are beginning to jostle with them up front. Isn't it a classic team race? It's like Kenya versus Ethiopia there, the BMC versus the IMC. What a mix of vests. What a tussle for a team, team race. Hallis still leads from Norman and two Irish boys looming. Emma Dunleavy running a very good race in fourth place. Keo and Dunleavy are up there. Norman and Hallis have had a really good race so far.
Can they keep it going? It's Harrison Field first and second. Now here goes Eric Kyo in third place. And in fourth, here is Richard Owens. It's going to be a really great battle to the line. Will it be a British victory or an Irish one? Hallis has worked it well at the right time. Hallis will win for the British Milers Club. Eric Kyo in second place for Ireland. Cameron Field is third for the British Milers Club. So Britain one and three, and the Irishman in second place. And it was 3.46.35 in terms of the race. It was uh, so competitive. That was a super race. The Brits, they, the BMC, they, they really got it together there over the last 200 metres, first, third and fourth place. No, no doubt about them winning the team race. Um, very fine time too, 3.46. That's equivalent of about a 4.03 mile. So the really high quality in that race. It just shows you that the night is good for racing middle distance, certainly. Jesse was complaining about the cold for the sprinters, but the middle distance runners are just loving this. Maybe, you know what, maybe I was premature about saying the cold. There's been so many good races so far. Maybe it's not as cold. I haven't been warming up like they all have been. And I think, like I said, the crowd's really getting, the crowd is not as big as I've seen it before in Morton Games, but uh, the crowd is really getting behind them. They're just being cheered on the whole way around. And there's that competitive element, the BMC versus the IMC. You know, everyone wants to come out on it's top. It's a great idea. And Eric yeah. Kyo, who actually was the first Irish man home there, ran a really good race. I'd say he ran 3, what, 47? And that would be a PB for Eric. And I know he was very disappointed after the National 1500 Meters Championships um, that he didn't get something out of it. But he got, he got his reward tonight. And it just shows you that in athletics, in running, in sports, there's always the next event. So the IMC versus BMC. Eric Kyo, 3.47.08. Cameron Field, 3.47.83. Josh Norman, 3.48.75. Well, now one of the great races, the Albie Thomas Memorial Men's 3,000 metres. The great Australian who won here back in the 50s. And a really good international field in this, Yannick Michels, We've already seen in the Cork City Sports this year, Great Britain represented by Adam Clark, Johnny Taylor and Richard Weir. John Travis, seventh in the 1500 metres of the European Indoors last year in Prague. Mark Christie, lifetime best uh, from seven years ago. Good road racer these days. Johnny Taylor way ahead of the rest of the moment and his big hope will be at this stage with three and a half laps to go that he hasn't gone too early. He looks a bit uncertain in what he's doing. That pace dropped about only really to a 64. He didn't want to lead, he went back. 7.44 is the meeting record. It'll be hard to see this going, to be honest, but he's just got to put the head down and keep it whirling. And all of the meeting records, by the way, and events competed for tonight have gone in the last three years. So he goes with three laps to go, goes through in 4.44 at uh, 1800 meters then in the strides beginning to emerge this is eric avila of the united states he won his heat in the 1500 meters at the u.s olympic trials a couple of weeks ago finished 11th in the final and it was the all sports cascade conference athlete of the year four times national champion good bit of movement coming as well the man in purple is adam clark the uk road mile champion with that 755 lifetime best but it's still a significant gap just can't doubt yourself at this stage just keep it up johnny Johnny Taylor of Great Britain wearing 124 is our leader. Two laps to go when he comes through. Taylor's done brilliantly here. But can he keep it up? He's going to come through with around 550 and two laps remaining, and they're beginning to reel him in a little bit. And it's Eric Avila leading the peloton. John Travis behind in third place. Then it's Matt Bergen. It's, uh, Matt Bergen moving up there just behind him as well in fourth well he'll do very well to hang on here and at the moment he is clinging on but johnny taylor has a big gap there now of about 40 meters on the field but don't write off john travers he's sufficiently close to be a threat and john when he kicks and then he's when he's on his game he can really finish fast and he looks he looks to have the bit between his teeth there now he looks to believe that he can catch johnny taylor he's got it's a 30 meters maybe back Decent lead over Erica Vela of the United States in second place. Johnny Taylor fighting hard, trying to keep his spirits up. 
It's been a solid display so far, and he's got the rest ganging up and in behind. That foreshortens it, certainly. John Travers and Matt Bergen representing Ireland. They're now in second and third place. Here comes the bell in the LB Thomas men's 3,000 metres. It's taken by Johnny Taylor. Now it's really congesting behind him with John Travers and Matt Bergen, and Bergen is good. Good move up into second place here in his Morton Games debut. He's in second place. Travis has fallen back down into third. Avila is now even further back a place behind. And now on the outside representing Derby is Richard Weir. Is he the man to take on and beat Johnny Taylor? We've got 200 meters to go. And certainly the momentum looks to be with Richard Weir here. Still fighting hard as Matt Bergen in third place. Travis has fallen back. Fighting for fourth, holding off Eric Avil at the moment. But the big battle's on here. It's Johnny Taylor. And here reeling him in is Richard Weir. Taylor leads. Taylor against Weir. Bergen behind in third place. It's virtuoso stop all the way if he can hang on. And he will hang on. Johnny Taylor gets the victory. Richard Weir in second place. In third will be Matt Bergen with Eric Avila in fourth. And John Travers in fifth. And that was 7.56.06 unofficial, and it was all his own work. As always, a really good race there. Great finish. Johnny Taylor, I did him a disservice earlier on, but he really ran well and hung on there when he needed to. Very good, very good run there from Matt Bergen, who has been running from DSD. He's emerged this summer. He ran well in the 5,000 meters in the national championship and has been figuring in a lot of the track races this year. A new name maybe for Irish athletics. Pacers did a good job, Connor Healy, Matt Clowes and Dermot McDermott, but Johnny Taylor was so far in front, you might have thought for a while that he was a pacemaker. Well, in the end, he was the ultimate one. Coming up towards the bell, Travers was still in a good position, and Bergen too, and Eric Avila began to make a little bit of a move up, and then Richard Weir came up, but just couldn't reel Johnny Taylor in in the end. One final turn for home. Great encouragement coming from Noel Guyton. Brilliant racing this. And I absolutely agree that when you take the clock away, it just makes it all that bit more thrilling. Taylor holds off where, and Bergen did a very good job in the end of Herrick, holding off Eric Avila, by the way, to successfully defend third place, 7.56.06. Johnny Taylor wins the LB Thomas Memorial Men's 3,000 metres. Brilliant virtuoso stuff. 756.06 with Richard Weir in second place. For Derby, 756.66 with Matt Bergen in third. And Erica Vila of the United States in fourth with John Travers fifth and Mark Christie in sixth place. You know, there's nothing to lose. Come here for a fast time, so why not? Were you expecting the field to come with you? Yes. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to lead. But once I found myself there, like I said, I thought, you know, I haven't came here to hang about, so I've got to try and run fast. Because I guess most of the people watching on would have seen the three pacemakers and you out there and maybe thought you were a pacemaker as well. Yeah, possibly. But, I mean, that's what I was worried about, being the, the fourth pacemaker for everyone else. But luckily I was managed to hold on, so, yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, the World of the University Games champion, Thomas Barr, with a slight groin strain, not a risk for Rio, didn't want to risk this tonight. The world champion from 2013 that he beat here two years ago, Jeff Weir Gordon of Trinidad and Tobago is here, as is Quincy Downing of the United States. It's a very good competitive field. And also Jacob Paul, who will be running tomorrow in the Diamond League in London. It's a busy weekend for him. He's got a flight booked at 9.10. The taxi's running. Gordon in four, Downing in three, Williams in five, Morton in six. Can Morton win at the Morton Games? He's in the yellow. Meet record held by Thomas Barr, 48-94. That win two years ago. They were held a long time, but now they're away. Downing in three, Gordon four, Williams five, and Morton in six. The lanes to watch out for, but Paul Byrne in two, not doing too badly either. Williams trying to get the uh, 
stagger up on uh, Morton straight away and Jeff Way Gordon in lane four. Remember the last time he raced there, he was beaten and he's already looking to overtake Williams on his outside and Morton in lane six. So it's going well for Jeff Way Gordon at the moment. Quincy Downing doing his best to try and keep up as they reach with 150 to go. Jeff Way Gordon in lane four from Trinidad and Tobago. The man who lifted world championship gold is going to have a bit of a race on his hands here. Downing in three is beginning to fight back. Here they come with one hurdle to go. And it's Reese Williams who stepped up right at the mark and the former European champion. Reese Williams is going to take the victory here with Downing in second place, Morton in third, 49.50 the winning time, unofficial. And Reese Williams came very good there in the third quarter. He gets the victory for Great Britain. 49.5, I'm afraid there was a slight malfunction as you'll see with the stadium clock. It means that Thomas Barr keeps his stadium record. Yeah, Jehu Gordon didn't really get the best of starts. He's a very, very tall, or he did get a good start. He's a very tall rangey athlete. First 200 meters, he took off. You know, I have to take back what I said. He wasn't in the shape, but he just didn't have it at the end. Could be lack of race practice. Reese Williams didn't really feature in the first 200. I kind of had him written off after the first six hurdles, but he came through like a train. He's a very experienced athlete. He's been around for years. He's his first major championship medal as senior was 10 years ago. So, you know, that experience came to the fore today. And then Christian Morton quits and Quincy, Quincy Jones put or. Yeah, Quincy Downing pushed him all the way through to the end, but it really was all about Reese Williams at the end. It was uh, fifth yeah. in Amsterdam recently in the Europeans, and very good last 100 metres there. You must feel good with that. Yes, yeah, it's always nice to win, and a lot of these races are so packed, and they're so uh, tough and packed with top athletes. So, yeah, always nice to win. When you were coming down the last 200 there, and Jehu was out in front, what was the plan there in your race, and how did you intend to run it? You see, in all these races, these guys bomb off, and they expect to hang on. So I always know you can't run beyond yourself, so pacing's key, you know, and I got about it just right today, yeah. How have you felt your season's gone then? Uh, I've, I've, I know all the athletes say the same old thing, but I've had a real, real tough time, so I've had a great season. Come back from 2014, a lot of issues. So, yeah, it's been great, it's been great. Well, I wish you back for, best for the next year. Uh, thank you, thank you. Reese Williams takes the men's 400 hurdles, 49.50 seconds, with Quincy Downing in second place for the USA, 49.88. Christian Morton in third, 50.02. Cameron French in fourth place, 52.5. And after a very good start, Jerry Gordon is down in fifth place, 50.73, with Paul Byrne sixth, 50.81. Yeah. But now the final of the women's 100 meters, and it's Ireland against Nigeria firmly in this. Stephanie Kalu, who won the warm up race from uh, SMU, Southern Methodist University, all those major championships under her belt across 2012 and 2013. Can the Irish stop it? Neve Whelan, who finished uh, in third place in the Cork City Sports. Joan Healy was second. Phil Healy took the victory that night. Joan Healy, some good results lately for Bandon AC. Bronze in the Nationals here a few weeks ago and followed it up barely 48 hours later by finishing second in the Cork City Sports. Second in the Healy family race. So away we go, Kalu very much the one to watch. It's gonna be a good battle between uh, Kalu and Whelan right alongside. Does Kalu have it again this time? Healy's trying to find hard to push it back, but Kalu takes it. Whelan beats Healy, 11.60 the winning time. It's victory for Nigeria and Stephanie Kalu. Ireland two, three, four, five, six and seven with Whelan second, Healy in third, 11.60. Very good from the American base. Stephanie Carlo, US born as well. And that was decent. Really close race for second and third there. I was, you know, I, I actually don't even know if I can call it between uh, Neve and Joan. I think Neve might have just pipped her on the line. Yeah, I think Whelan definitely took that ahead of Joan Healy, which was the uh, reverse of the result for second and third behind Phil Healy. A couple of weeks ago at the Cork City Sports, Kalu out of the blocks very well. Now, Whelan was really challenging her very well in the opening section of the race, but then Joan Healy beginning to push her way up in the yellow singlet there for Bandon AC. There was no stopping Kalu by this point. Healy couldn't quite overtake Whelan for second place, and Whelan couldn't quite overtake Kalu. So she's got the victory. 11.60, happy with that time? 
Um, not really, but I came out here, I did what I had to do. The weather's not as great, I'm from Texas, so it's hot, and I'm battling a little bit of injury, but it was good, I'm glad I won. Do you feel you got off to a slower start and you really struggled in that middle part of the race? Yeah, that's definitely, my transition is definitely the part that I struggle in, so working on that. Have you enjoyed running in Ireland? I have, I really like Ireland. This is my first time in Dublin, or Ireland appeared, and the people are really nice, I like it. Out for celebrate a bit tonight? Maybe, maybe. Oh my gosh, Stephanie, you're so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin. Stephanie, enjoy your evening. Thank you. Stephanie Carlo takes at 11.60 with Neve Whelan pipping Joan Healy by a hundredth of a second. Cleaner Manning was fourth and Sarah Murray in fifth. Ah, selfie time. There you go. We had a bit of this in Amsterdam. We had a bit of this in Grosseto as well. Uh, the IPCs. There you go. Tweet that. Well, we do have a couple of Irish in this men's 100 meters final. Katie Ogbonne in lane one, Eamon Fahey in lane eight. But the uh, Americans, Dentarius Locke and uh, Joe Morris, the latter reaching the US trials final. Canadian Bismarck Boateng and Kevin Thompson maybe to get a victory for Jamaica and keep the 100 meters Morton Games crown in that country. Left a long time, really good start. It was by Mackenzie in three. It was a brilliant start for him. And here comes the Canadian batting in four as well. And it's uh, Tobias who's shooting forward. This is good work. Morris up there. I think might just have got the win. Just ahead of Locke. And it's 10.4. Given us the winning time. Joe Morris of the United States, who reached the final of the US Olympic trials. And it remains as 10.4. Good blanket finish, actually. It was a, a bit of give and take in that. Bertang had started uh, excellently for Canada, out of lane four. Brilliant start by McKenzie, Ramon McKenzie of Jamaica in three. And for a moment, we thought, would it be the case that There'd be another Jamaican victory here. Look at him go out of lane three. And then just look at Morris with the head down. Tobias alongside and Locke actually coming up well two and five. So Joe Morris takes it 10.23 with his fellow American Dentarius Locke in second place, 10.27. Boateng third for Canada in the end, 10.40. Tobias fourth, Mackenzie fifth. But I'll win it. There's only one Joe Morris. Joe, that was a... Uh very good last 30 meters there. Dentaris was really on your shoulder, but you managed to pull away. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, I'm more known for a good start and a kind of a sloppy finish, but you know, I'll take whatever. I think I could have done a lot better, but I'm pleased with it. How difficult is it as far as 100 meter running goes in the United States at the moment? Because there are some very good runners in front of you. It's fast. It's fast. They send you, they send you out there to like the trials, you know, and that's where you learn. Really, you get against some of the best guys in the world. So I kind of come out here, and it's kind of like good time to work on technique so when you're looking at your next 12 months then what are you looking to improve on oh man a whole lot almost a whole every phase of the race but uh i also just want to just get some wins get some confidence under my belt and enjoy the rest of the season timmy crow has had a good run uh, particularly in the he's featured in the uh, irish relay squad overall nick ennis is in this israel Ibanu, those two have been uh, brought in in the past couple of days. Terence Argaard of Netherlands competed at the home European Championships in Amsterdam. Luke Lennon Ford might be looking to take out the rest of the European under 23 bronze medalist from 2011. Beaten by the man we'll see in the next heat and Brian Brieger. So we'll come into Crow and three. Lennon Ford in four, Loudon five, Agard six, Ennis seven, Ibanu in eight. So where we go first time, good start by Loudon in five and Lennon Ford in four and Timmy Crow's not doing too badly in lane three either and Nick Ennis has gone quite well out of the block straight away, out of lane seven, but now Lennon Ford in the back straight, beginning to move up and his British international colleague Greg Loudon, Timmy Crow trying hard not to be left behind in lane three, making a bit of move up with Adam McComb in two, but it's held up well. Loudon pushing away, Lennon Ford right alongside, and Loudon's flying at the moment, and Lennon Ford is too. It's going to be very tight between these two, and Agard has moved up also well for the Netherlands here. Brilliantly. He's uh, 
really taking care of the rest magnificently in the third quarter of the race might still be reeled in by Loudon. Terence Agard is coming through to win. It's Loudon in second, it's Timmy Crow in third. 47.5 hours the winning time, for this heat at least. And Agard, well, how well he came over in the back straight in the end. Loudon came close, but not enough. And Timmy Crow actually had uh, rounded in on Lennon Ford quite excellently. Yeah, just uh, started missing out. Luke Lennon Ford in the end as he uh, fell right back. Victory for the Netherlands. And in third place for Ireland, Timmy Crow. Irish 400 metre running at the moment is doing rather well. You're aspiring obviously to bigger things. Yes, I'm uh, very happy with that. <laughs> about national seniors, uh, which last year probably would have qualified me, but the lads have really stepped up this year. Just missing out on the final and those boys really stepped up today. So it's looking good for us. Uh, we just missed out on the big standard. But hopefully in four years' time, we're all young, we'll all be battling away then. Quite a good start, quite a good finish. Maybe the 150 metres or so in between. Is that an area you feel you really need to work on? Yeah, well, look, I haven't really trained since uh, seniors because it was such a massive blow to me. But I'm just getting ready for it. I want to go to European indoors and go to university games next year. So I just really want to have fun now and enjoy a nice night tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Good work by Timmy Crow to take uh, third in that. But now the best in that, ready to see how they will fare against those in race two of this men's 400 meters. Terence Agard takes the opening race of the men's 400 meters, 47.49, with Greg Loudon in second place, 47.72, and Timmy Crow in third place with 47.91. And at the moment, if you want the podium, that's what you have to aim for. Yeah, Terence Agard, by the way, winning that first heat. So let's hear from the Dutchman. Terence, your initial thoughts on that? Uh, it was a good race. Uh, I liked it. I'm just coming back from an injury, so I'm just happy to finish the race healthy. How difficult as an athlete is it when you have injuries during the season, especially when it's in the Olympic year? Well, I mean, you know, it's a pity. You know, it's very, very tough to, you know, to get injured during Olympic year. But yeah, you know, I just put everything behind and I'm now just looking forward. Thanks very much for your time. You're welcome. The second race now, isn't it great to see David Gillick back on the track and be competitive and hungry again? And I'm really looking forward to this clash, if only between himself and Brian Gregan tonight. I know Brian has bossed the last couple of races, but David is the old fox in there and, I, and he, he's in an inside lane there on Brian, so he'll have a good eye on him around, around the back of the track there. and. Hopefully the two of them can excite the crowd and bring us to bring them to their feet. Yeah, and between uh, Dave and Brian in lane three is uh, Winston George there from Guyana. He was actually the London flag bearer for his country for Guyana. Saddam Kumi also of Sudan. Former African junior champion, we should tell you, 2011. Gold in the four and the four by four. It's Gillick, George, Gregan, Kumi, Dunn, Mellon, Plendelet. So away we go, solid start it was by Gillick too. Green alongside in four, Comey for Sudan going very well in five, but Gregan is beginning to catch up a little bit on the former African W champion. Gillick is uh, trying to push up in two alongside Winston George, but Brian Gregan's going very well at the moment. And Jared Dunn, also a great Briton, in the red singlet, catching up on uh, Andrew Mellon and over, taking over on the far side. Good battle between Gregan and Kumi at the moment in four and five. Kumi's beginning to fight back. Jared Dunn going great guns for Great Britain in lane six. Kumi has got the uh, better of Gregan for the moment. He looks as if he's got the better of Dunn here. And look at Winston George of Guyana come up right at the end. It's George who takes it, does he? Oh, it was tight between George and Kumi. Dunn was certainly in third place. 45-74. That was a terrific race. One of the fastest we've ever seen in this stadium. We've had European Dean Joseph and European Cups here as well. George might just have dipped on the line ahead of Kumi. It was really tight between the two. Don, who led for a long way, was in third place. And Gregan was past Kumi for a bit of that. But how well Kumi responded. Good start from Gregan it was, but it's the finish we'll really be interested in. Yeah, it was a brilliant finish from both Kumi. Well, Gregan, he pushed Kumi the whole way around, but he just didn't really have the legs at the end. It really was all about um, Kumi and George at the end. 
if that time is um, accurate, that will actually be a PB, I think, for Kumi. He's a 45.83 runner, so brilliant to see that people are running PBs on the track here um, and this front home crowd. Jared Dunn from Great Britain had a brilliant first 300 metres. Just the lactic hit him like it does in 400 metres, and he just didn't have the legs at the end to hold off um, George on the inside, but brilliant race from lane three and lane five. And let's not forget the Irish boys there. I'm sure they've run high, high 46s, but they contributed to a very fine race there. On the near side, pushing his way through is Kumi. George on the far. Kumi certainly looked to have got it at that stage, but George with every stride, pushing up and pushing up. And I think it's Kumi. That's just with the naked eye. On the head on, it look more like George. Right, Brian Gregan is with me now. He's got his drink of water. Apologies for the delay there. Brian, um, how did you feel that went? Um, a bit messy. I'm still feeling very flat from the Europeans. Hard to get back up for missing the Olympics. I've you know, been that close to missing out. Uh, training's been all over the place. Just trying to recover for the last few weeks. You know, four races in five days, and Amsterdam was tough. Hard to come back. It was great, great meet here as always. Top class, love it, but uh, just hard to get going today. It's a rare old time, isn't it, for 400 metre running in Ireland, but the disappointment of missing out on Rio, I suppose physically you mentioned it took a toll, but mentally it must be exhausting. Uh, mentally more than anything, to be honest. Like, it's hard to get your head back in the game, you know. That's what you've been focusing on for the last couple of years, and to miss out and to be that close, it's pretty tough, but it's part of sport, you know, that's what happens. Hopefully it'll drive us on for the next one. Good to see you back here in Dublin anyway and look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much, Chris. David, uh, it's been a long 12 months. You were here with us last year. You're back on the track now. How does it feel? Yeah, it feels good. Uh, I've been running my whole life. Um, I retired three years ago and to be honest, I missed it. You know, I did. I, I missed it and it became a bit of a, a fear to get back on the track. But I said to myself, you know what, why not? Why not get out there? and just see, see if I can still run and thankfully I've managed to get my times coming down a little bit and here I am supporting this great meet in Dublin. Really disappointing too, just missed out on that Rio qualification with the relay in Amsterdam, how's that feel? Yeah, two weeks ago we were, we were in the thick of it and uh, you know, credit to the lads, the team, there was a couple of boys struggling with injury throughout the year and we thought maybe it wasn't going to happen at all but we grouped together after our national championships, we got a team out there and we finished fifth in Europe which is, is a brilliant achievement unfortunately. We just missed that top 16 slot for Rio, but it's very important now to keep that momentum going, make sure that we have a bit of strength in depth, which I believe is there, and keep that momentum going because it gives some of the younger guys something to aim for. Maybe individual is a little bit out of reach right now, but collectively as a team, we can go to champs. So next on the track is the women's Morton Mile. So here we go, Hannah England of Great Britain, great to have her here. Silver in the 1500 metres in the Worlds in 2011. Nikki Hamblin, who won in the Cork City Sports, the Commonwealth Games double medalist from 2010 in Delhi. So it's Nikki Hamblin, Heather Camp. Great to have her here as well, the four times US mile champion. Katie Mackey, Stephanie Shaffert, Lauren Paquette, Mariah Kelly, those two from Canada. Corey McGee, Sarah Sutherland, Monica Lassa from Poland. She'll be interesting. Sammy Silva, USA. Ashley Cuff, USA. Uh, Emma Mitchell for Ireland, the only lone Irish athlete in here in the Irish England, and Hannah England here as well. This should be a good race. Yeah, Hannah England would be probably the best known athlete in the field, having, having won a medal at the World Championships a couple of years ago. The meet record is held by Molly Huddle, who many, many will remember running 4.26 a couple of years ago. Last year it was won by a girl called Kira McGean, who's gone on to better things this summer. The women's mile is underway. It probably doesn't have the same magical effect as the men's for this simple thing about four minutes. It's very difficult for, a, I suppose it's when the first woman breaks four minutes that it will take on an entirely new meaning. At the moment, it's, they're nowhere near four minutes, but they, they are within shouting distance of 4.10, 4.15. That's the kind of world-class, absolute top of the, top of the heap stuff. Here we're, Camp, Corey McGee, Kate Mackey, Nikki Hamblin, they're all uh, the one, two, three, four behind our pacemaker, Charlotte Green at the moment, and they're uh, going through in uh, about a minute and five. Five of them breaking away behind our pacemaker, Charlotte Green for now. Constant glances down at the watch. Heather Camp, 10, 
in the uh, semi-final in the 1500 meters in the US trials, just on the outside of the black, the 24-year-old American, third in the US trials in 2013. She reached the world championships, went out in the uh, heat, though, did Corey McGee, making good ground at the moment, and uh, they are well-paced, and Hannah England uh, trying to make a good move up as well, but in that uh, yellow and blue singlet for the United States, it's Katie Mackey, her lifetime best in the mile, 427.78. She's a regular Diamond League athlete and was sixth in the US trials in the 5,000 meters this year. They're certainly going for it. The, the field is very fragmented as they come up the home straight. We'll be looking for an 8.80 time um, shortly as they cross here, just short of the finish line, about 2.15, to around 2.15, 4.30 type pace. Nikki Hamlin up there as well from New Zealand, who won the 3,000 metres in the Cork City Sports last year. Two Commonwealth Games, three World Championships under a belt. Hannah England up there as well. She's wearing 32 here. Fourth in the 1,500 metres of the Worlds in Moscow in 2013. And a couple of high finishes in the top seven in the Europeans and the Commonwealth Games two years ago. The three times British 1,500 metres champion. Just look how congested it is. Wearing 20. That's Heather Camp. Just behind her is Corey McGee. 22 there is Stephanie Shepard. Don't run her out either. Pacemaker's gone. Nikki Hamlin moving up in the New Zealand black as well, wearing 19, and currently tucked in in the fourth place. So it's very tight between Hamlin, Camp, Mackie, Shepard, McGee in England. Yeah, Nikki Hamlin hanging on there in fourth place, and, and that's about it, hanging on there because there's moves being made at the front of the field. Hannah England looking good. Really good pace now. It's going to pick up, and we'll see what... I think it's going to be a very fast last lap. Here comes the bell, and it's Camp leading the way with McGee at the moment, and Mackie is in third place, and Hamlin's moving back to fourth, and it's between these three, it looks for now, unless we can have a bit of a fight back from Hamlin in fourth place, and maybe a little bit of a little scrap from Shepard as well in fifth. They've really opened up a, a decent margin here. Is it going to be between these three in the podium? It's been very good work from Heather Camp for most of this race so far. It's Camp, and it's McGee, and then tucked in on the inside, Side as well. Good work from Katie Mackey. Can Camp hold on here? There's a really good chance that she's going to do it because they've done well to burn off Nikki Hamlin by that stage. And Hannah England have done well in the early exchanges. Heather Camp could lead this from gun to tape all the way remarkably in a women's mile. She's done fantastically in this. Molly Huddle with the uh, record, but she's beginning to tie up here, Camp. And here comes Katie Mackey in the USA. At the right time, Katie Mackey pounces and Camp is Bent and McGee in third place, but here comes Katie Mackey. She's on her way to victory here. It's going to be very fast. There's an opportunity. The record of 426 could go. She's going to do it. 425 48 is a new women's Morton Mile record. And what a brilliant victory for Katie Mackey, and really, what a brilliant victory. Well, we felt she might run a fast last lap. She did more than that, she did enough to break Molly Huddles track record 425 fantastic running equivalent to about 407 408 1500 meters and that just shows you this track is fast when the competition is there oh magnificent and just the way she overtook heather camp with two to go there is the new meeting record good race oh it was a brilliant race from gun to tape i mean I know you said, Dick, that there isn't the same electrifying atmosphere around the women's t um, as there is the men's races, but I think everyone got on their feet, everyone got behind the girls, really, really pushed them to a fast time. Um, I think the three or four girls that have broken away from the main pack, it really was always going to be about them. Corey McGee tied, a little bit more, tied up a little bit more than I thought she would in the final stages. She was at World Indoors for the USA um, only in uh, March, but really she just didn't have the legs at the end it was all about heather camp she had a, a brilliant um last hundred meters she really had left it really really strong and left it to the end and a new personal best to boot so i think she's come away a new personal best by over five seconds so a brilliant run by her oh, magnificent for katie mackie and she did finish six in the u.s trials in the 5,000 meters that's why we see her quite often in the diamond league and uh, Two steps beyond the line, a three, and a little glance at the camera. Heather Camp in second place, Corey McGee in third. Here's our winner. Well, Katie, we saw the smile when you went across the line. It's still there. New record. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Actually, um, so when I was seven years old, my dad told me that his mile PB was 426. And I decided 
I'm gonna beat my dad's PB because I didn't know that that would be stupid hard. And <laughs> I, the closer and closer I've come to it, um, the, the more exciting it's been for me and I finally did it today, so. Absolutely brilliant. In that last 100 meters there, you really put your foot down, but it was like the legs were trying to get you across the line, but you couldn't move any further, but you made it. Yeah, I uh, am coming off of the US Olympic trials, so I've had quite a week. I mean, I ran two 5Ks, I ran the 3K in Monaco, and I just wanted to come out here because I know that I'm fit and the conditions were perfect. The pacer did a great job. There was good girls in the race. You know, I just feel really thankful that it all came together because the majority of races I've been in in my pro career, they don't come together like that. And when they do, it's a very, very special thing. And it's a really special thing that happened here tonight, so. Just, just finally, when you go through so many races in a short period of time, the lactic acid build up, how does it feel at the end of the season? Um, it feels pretty bad right now. <laughs> Luckily, they got some massage therapists here to take care of us. This is just like an awesome meet to come to. They really, really take care of the athletes. Um, it's just a top-notch meet and one that I always really look forward to competing in. Congratulations. Katie Mackey takes the women's mile, 425.48 that a new meeting record. The all comers record still four seconds faster, set at the Cork City Sports 1994 by Sonia Sullivan. Heather Cam second, 4.27.33, Corey McGee third, and Stephanie Shepard fourth. Big talent in this men's 800 meters. Jordy Williams set his lifetime best at the Morton Games two years ago. Declan Murray, Carl Griffin, Kieran Kelly, Zach Kern for Ireland. We've seen uh, James Eichberger run here and in uh, Belfast previously. So where we go, Kelly Eichberger, Mathis Rutt, Griffin Walker, Murray, Kern, Abdul Langford Mays, and Jordy Williams, Ben Mays being the pace maker going straight out in the front. Shaquille Walker, what a brilliant start from the United States. Look how far out he is. And the stagger's going to come in. You'd almost think he was the pacemaker and not Ben Mays. Some good Irish runners in this. Carl Griffin, Declan Murray, Kieran Kelly. The battle of the Irish is going to be interesting within this race. Everybody seems really committed from the start. Looks like they're going to make the most of the evening and go for that fast time. So it's Walker who is our leader. Certainly not walking. Langford just behind them in real second place, taking out our pacemaker, Ben Mays. Bit of movement coming on the outside from Mike Rutt. Departing here, the Villanova shirt of Jordy Williams. They take the bell. What a big lead. A huge lead by Shaquille Walker as Mike Rutt moves up into second place realistically. Remember the man in front, Ben Mays, is down as the pacemaker. And he's off the track now. And it's Shaquille Walker who's running his way to glory. Can anyone catch him up? Oh, he's, he's really flying down the back straight. He went through the bell in about 50.5. So he knows that there's a good time on. He's no choice but to keep going. And the pack are closing like a like a cyclist in the Tour de France. Yes, it's Shaquille Walker, who has blitzed the rest so far, but there's still a good 20% of the race remaining. Walker has held off the rest so far, fighting well as Kyle Langford, who's been second throughout. Good work by Zach Kern to hold things up in third place. And here comes Zach Kern, doing some good work on the outside, maybe gonna take second, but it's gonna be first for Shaquille Walker. Oh, Shaquille Walker's dying up. Oh, here he comes, Curran! And right in the middle, Langford. Another amazing blanket finish. Langford in the middle might just have got the rubbing Walker at the end, just as Zach Curran looked as if he might have taken it in 146.74. Oh, what a brilliant race. What a brilliant race right through the field. There was great times. Blanket finish been across many of the placings. And the three Irish boys in there around the 147 mark. Really good running. That was a brilliant race by Zach. Um, Zach Curran, I think he was kind of off all of our radars at the time. We were all focused on um, Shaquille Walker. He's fresh from the US trial semi-finalist there. Just went out too hard. The first 600 meters, he just took off and let everyone else reel him in and you could hear a taster of the Morton the Morton roar there when Zach Curran looked like he was going to take the winning the win but unfortunately he was just edged out at the end but an absolutely brilliant race from all three athletes oh actually Zach Zach will have obviously got the 146 as well what a great run what a great breakthrough 
What a show, literally what a breakthrough. What a shove by Kyle Langford, <laughs> almost to take it right on the line. So Kieran McGeehan and Laura Crow representing Ireland in this. Alex Bell for Great Britain and a hat trick of Canadians as well. And Annie LeBlanc, Rachel Aubrey and Samantha Murray. Cap Marshall's had a very good season for New Zealand, but that mark to watch out for Roseanne Galligan setting it at the first anniversary games in London in 2013. Two minutes, point five eight, and the European 1500 metres bronze medalist Kieran McGinn is tidying that tonight, we're told. Real quality right across the board. Marshall, Butterworth, Crow, Bell, Murphy, Myris, McGeehan, McGowan, LeBlanc, Saunders, Aubrey, and our pacemaker is Sinead Denny. So they've got a quality athlete out in the track to try and set a very good pace here as well. Kira McGeehan, the bronze medalist of the European Championships, previously a silver in the World Youth Championships 09, silver in the World Juniors 2010, silver in the European Juniors in 2011. And don't forget, it all started off way back in 2009 in Tampere when she won gold in the European Youth Olympics and she's right up at the fore with Annie LeBlanc on her shoulder straight away. Yeah, we'll be looking for a time under two, under 60 seconds, obviously at the bell. I would be looking for 57, 58 for Kira to have a, re a realistic chance of breaking two minutes. She's right up there where she needs to be and just hopefully that pace will be correct at the bell and then she can go where no Irish woman has gone before. Here comes Kira McGinn. She's going to take the bell. Let's see, 58, 59.45. She's doing well. She's doing very well at the moment. And just uh, on her shoulder, Annie LeBlanc. It is going to be very, very tight. But McGinn has uh, got the lead here as our pacemaker, Sinead Denny, steps off. It was heroic stuff in Amsterdam. She had huge scratches on both her thighs. She's got 300 to go. 52 is Alex Bella Britton, who was third here last year in the Morton Mile. And 57 is Annie LeBlanc. But it's Kira McGinn who leads here. And she's got two targets to win the race and break the Irish record. Well, she's got to run this last 200 metres in under 30 seconds she was 129 at 600 the race has been put up to her can Kira find the strength and the drive and the hunger to have a go at that two minute barrier you know something she's not slowing oh it was a brilliant brilliant performance from her in Amsterdam but she's gonna have to defend Alex Bell here she won the more than my last year can she get the 800 meters and the Irish record it's Bell on the outside it's McGinn in the inside Bell's gonna take it and it's 2.0055. Oh. 2055 is the winning time for Bell with McGinn in second place. Well, I reckon she's just missed out on that Irish record of two minutes 0.58. That'll be confirmed in the next few moments. It was so tight, but what a really solid win in the end. And she just managed to pip it, just managed to get past McGinn there, did Alex Bell. Well, Kira did nothing wrong. She ran a superb race. She got a personal best. That sets her up brilliantly for Rio. If two minutes is to be broken, you do have to go through the first 400 a touch faster than they went through. There's always the slowing factor in an 800 metres. But boy, her strength is really good. That was a great race. No, that was a brilliant race. Excuse me, brilliant race from Kira all around. Alex Bell pushed her the whole way to the line. Set a personal best in the end. Um, and Alex Bella in herself is a quality GB athlete, so I think Kira couldn't have been in a better place to try and break that record. She was just fractured outside it. Still nearly two seconds of a PB for Kira, so still a brilliant run. She's a 1500 meter runner by trade, so that time is going to come. She's going to get that Irish record. It's only a matter of when. And it was between McGeehan and Bell for the final 300, the rest really tying up. And in the closing straight, Alex Bell came and came. She was one of six with the Olympic qualifying time. And McGeehan this time, having had it in Amsterdam, having just been bit by Sifan Hassan, but getting past finger of Norway. Well, she's got a good smile for someone who's finished in second place. Now, 2.0055, the winning time by Alex Bell, just inside that Irish record. And let's hear from Alex Bell. Alex Bell with me at the moment. Well, there was big support for Kira McGeehan, obviously coming down the straight, but you managed to hold her out. You're very happy with the run. Um, so over the moon with the run I knew it was going to be a fast race obviously because they wanted to go for the Irish record and I was like brilliant I couldn't miss an opportunity when the, that time with her. when the pacemaker went out really quick what was your plan was your plan to make sure you went to the front and try and stay there yeah I knew that um, I've had a lot of quite fast races on the lead up to this and I knew that I was capable of running them sort of times at 200 400 600 
And I knew whatever time it'd be at 600, as long as I could hold off and just keep digging and digging and digging. And I knew that time would come sooner or later. Obviously high hopes for you in the future, looking down the track to major championships. What are you looking forward to now? Um, well, as it goes for the rest of the season, I'm flying out to London tomorrow to do the London Diamond League. Um, and then after that, I've got nothing in my calendar for the rest of the month. So I'm so glad that I've, I've managed to nearly finish on a high. And then fingers crossed, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Kieran McGee, we're talking about you coming second in 800 metres. I know you're looking towards the 1500 metres, but are you slightly disappointed not to get there? Very disappointed. Very disappointed. I kind of suppose I had to do a lot of the work there from like 350 out. So I'd prefer to be the person chasing down the home straight instead of being the person chased. And I'm disappointed not to give the Irish people an Irish winner. But this is my first fast 800 in a long time with, with girls to race against. And hopefully I showed that I have pace over the 800 as well, which will help me in the 15. So uh, yeah, I'm very disappointed. I'll be back to to win this race in the mile in the future. It's been quite a whirlwind past few weeks for you, hasn't it? It has indeed, yeah. First major championship back in five years over at the European Championships and I was happy to come away with a medal for, for Ireland and see the green, white and gold raised. But uh, once again, I was disappointed with the bronze. So, do you know what? I think it's a testament to the work that I've put in, my coach has put in and my whole team has put in. Like I've been studying full time in UCD, training full time. So I have my college to thank and UCD Ad Astra for helping me split up my years. But I'd be lost without my family and my coach Jerry Kiernan, Physio Emma Galvin out in, out in the Institute of Sport with Athletics Ireland. And they've helped me be here. This is the first time I've been able to show the world what I can do. So hopefully it's just the beginning. Well, you're a great advert for not only Irish athletics, but athletics in general. Congratulations and good luck to Rio. Thanks very much. Thank you. Alex Pell taking the women's 800, two minutes, 0.53. Kieran McGeehan in second place, two minutes, 0.79. So the Roseanne Gallagher record survives by about 0.2 with Bailey Myers of the USA in third and Kat Marshall of New Zealand in fourth place. Here's the field for the 2016 Morton Mile. Just one Irish in this, and that being Paul Robinson, the fourth placer in the 1500 metres of the European Championships in Zurich, having done the same in Tampa at the European under-23s the year before. James West and Tom Marshall for Great Britain, Peter Callaghan for Belgium, Craig Hopper of Australia who broke Craig Mottram's 1500 metres junior record and was fourth in the Fifth Avenue Mile in New York this year. And they're off in the 2016 Morton Mile. McNamara, Merber, Robinson, Gregorek, Masters, Wynn, Palmer, Alexander, Huffer, Callahan, Matza, Marshall, West, McDonald, and Van Co. The pacemaker is making his way up. Mark McDonald in the Clonliffe singlet on pacemaking duties as well. Mark, a prodigy of St. Aidan's Whitehall and Clonliffe Harriers and a very fine 800 metres runner in his own right. And he's committing straight away and it's good to see the field tuck in. And buy, and buy into what he's trying to do, which is to bring them around in a fast time and set up a race that's in the great tradition of it. Will Lear, the record holder, 351, but we think of all the great Irish milers as we watch this. The Delaney's, the Cochlands, the O'Mara's, the O'Sullivan's, the Plins. Ronnie Delaney is here tonight, the greatest of them all, sitting in the front seat of the stand, and how he'll be enjoying this one. Tom Marshall wearing 12, Kyle Merber with the headband, it's Daniel Wynn and then making his way up in the blue singlet is Peter Callahan of Belgium, 337, 1500 minutes PB, taking the pacemakers out of the equation. Good start has been for Tom Marshall of Great Britain. He ran uh, the 800 metres in Letterkenny right at the start of this month and uh, lifetime best set in the 1500 metres in Ordegem in Belgium earlier this year of 3.39. He's keeping the advantage up, but Karl Merber going as well as well. Uh, the man whose lifetime best came in the Morton Games in 2014 and who won in the Cork City Sports two years ago. We had a 4.40 split of about 57 seconds from the pacemaker Mark McDonald who's just after dropping out. So now we're down to the real race and let's see how they invite the challenge. The pace is good, the atmosphere is great and the, the the event is bubbling up and building up to what should be a crescendo of a finish. Marshall Berber win, it remains, and just behind win as they come through the uh, home straight is Ford Palmer, and tucked it on the inside is Riley Masters, who's had good results here as well. Colby Alexander beginning to move up on the outside as well, still the pacemaker taking them through with two laps to go. From yeah. an Irish perspective, Paul Robbins is in, is in there and competing well and moving up through the field, and that's very, very encouraging. 
Yeah, Carl Marver, who I said was the one to watch out for, he's in uh, second place there in the white headband. He has a 3.54 to his name from this exact stadium two years ago. Can he go quicker? Can he maybe better his place, win the race? He's falling back. People are overtaking here, here now as the pacemaker drops out. Tom Marshall, Ford Palmer, the pacemaker almost got trapped there for a moment. Merva recognisable, immediately tucked in on the inside. Daniel Wynn, Riley Masters. Daniel Wynn is on the outside, Riley Masters on the inside. Taking them up is Ford Palmer with 500 metres to go. Peter Callahan on the outside, way out on the outside. But here they come for the penultimate time. Down the closing straight and it's Ford Palmer leading them out. Kyle Merva beginning to make a bit of movement on the outside and moving up into second place as they take the bell and Daniel wins in third place. And we've a bell time at 2.58 and Paul Robinson is still there. He's just hanging on the back of the pack. This is going to be a crescendo of a finish again. There's going to be a bucket load of them under four minutes because they're all there prompt and ready. Merber's done very well on the outside. It's good work by Ford Palmer to lead them through at the moment in the inside. Riley Masters, Daniel Wynn, Wynn moved on the inside. Merber is now moving his way up in towards the front and now they're really congesting because Goldie Alexander with the smaller headband is there and here comes Peter Callahan on the outside. Peter Callahan might have timed this absolutely right. Robinson is in there or thereabouts, somewhere along the way, almost a stumble. Johnny Gregoric on the outside too. Now Carl Merber is doing his best to hold on. It's Peter Callahan trying to take it on the outside. Even further on the outside is Gregoric. It might be a play can finish here, it's Merber on the inside, but it's Gregoric on the outside who wins it in 3.55.57 and Merber just missed out in the end, he looked as if he made the move in the right time but it's Johnny Gregoric of the USA who finished 6th in the US Olympic Trials of the 1500 metres taken by Ben Blankenship, it's Johnny Gregoric who takes the Morton Mile of 2016. And Johnny Gregoric comes from a famous lineage, his father by the same name was a very fine 1500 metre and 5000 metre runner back in Providence Green, where John Tracy and all the Irish guys are familiar and Johnny Gregoric he's a slimmer version of his father but by God he's fast and that was a great race and we, it looks like we had another 8 or 9 under 4 minutes fantastic way to finish the evening really tightly congested in the opening few laps and my word how the pace really rose towards the end yeah, and if we look down, you said eight or nine might have dipped under the four minutes. I think Paul Robinson, our only Irish representative, actually did dip under the four as well, maybe 3.58, 3.59 time. Brilliant running from Paul, who has, like I said, come back from injury to keep with the group the whole way around and to dip under that elusive four minutes. Brilliant race all around from all of them. Yeah, Ford Palmer took it up quite well, but just found himself out of steam in the final lap and out of nowhere Peter Callahan came along he'd been well tucked up do you look at Johnny Gregoric at this stage down in fourth place possibly fifth a little bit of jostling in the back Daniel Wynn was in the inside it looked as if Peter Callahan might just have been best place to take the victory at this stage to find a way past Kyle Merber but then in the orange almost out of nowhere still Johnny Gregoric great running Merber knew he was under pressure but he couldn't have realised it was almost out of lane three Merber in second place with third going to Colby Alexander it looked to me as if Peter Callahan was fourth but Johnny Gregoric gets the victory and an absolutely scintillating victory here as he takes victory in the 2016 Morton Mile Johnny Gregoric it's been a, a decent enough race there finished the end no record but how do you feel about that uh, good I mean, it was a personal record for me but uh, yeah not, not getting the new record it's uh, too bad but it was a great race I mean the pace was great the Great competition, it was a lot of fun. A few guys there who ran in the final of the US trials, so there was certainly some decent competition. Oh, absolutely, yeah, and in the international guys as well, really, really great competition. I mean, a lot of the guys I was kicking down with, I train with every day or I used to train with, so lots of familiar faces, familiar strides. It was, it's always kind of funny when that happens, yeah. I guess when you look at guys who run sub four minute miles and then they can come here and just have a chat like they haven't blown out a candle, how do you manage that? Um, I mean, it's a lot of fun, you know. I. I uh, keep good company, uh, obviously, and the, uh, it's great that Sub 4 is coming more and more popular. I think the sport's getting more and more popular, more attraction, and more talented people doing it means more you know, good training and better time. So it's, it's awesome that that's happening. Now, you've obviously you've missed out on the goal this year. It would have been real. Obviously, you would have loved course, to have been yeah. there. But uh, looking ahead for the next year or two, what goals are you going to set long term there? Um, I mean, the goal is to just keep improving, not change too much, not change anything with my coach, Coach Gagliano in New York. 
And uh, yeah, just basically, I mean, of course, I want to shoot for the world team next year. I was just sixth this year and uh, definitely got to get to the point where I'm running a little faster, run the times that are standards, you know. 337 for 15 isn't quite there, so getting close, yeah. Plenty of improvement there, and I'm sure we get there. Thanks for your time, Johnny. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Here's the Morton Mile result. Trigoric taking it for the United States. 355-57, ahead of Kyle Merber in second, Colby Alexander in third. Brilliant finish. Peter Callahan fourth, and Jerry Matsu was in fifth place. And look at all those sub four minute miles tonight. Paul Robinson included, and he finished in 11th place. Well, thanks very much. It was a certainly a decent run there at the end by Johnny Gregoric. It's been a decent evening here at the Morton Games, finishing with the Morton Mile. Jess Barr has joined me down here. Some outstanding international performances, some really good Irish performances as well. Let's just single out Kira McGann, shall we? She just missed out on that sub two minute, uh, 800 metres there, but what a performance heading towards Rio. Oh, I mean, Kira had all the pressure on her tonight. Every single eye in the stadium was on her. She was the Irish athlete everyone was watching. And to come away with a two-second PB fractionally outside the Irish record and be disappointed, you could see it in her face. She was disappointed. She wanted that Irish record. It just shows the calibre of athlete she is. She's in brilliant shape going out to Rio. She's a 1500 runner. That's only going to do her stead going out. I mean, I'm really excited to see how she's going to do in Rio. I think she could pull out a really good performance. Finalist, I think I think it's well, well within her. It was brilliant to see. And it just it gives you that encouragement that athletics is kind of, it's coming to the fore in Ireland, I hope, anyway. Certainly is. Well, thanks very much for your time tonight. Thanks very much for Dick Hooper and Will Downing and the rest of our team. It's been a brilliant night. Johnny Gregoric has finished it by winning the Morton Mile, but there's been outstanding performances. The one from a home point of view, Kira McGeon. It's been absolutely brilliant here in the 800. She goes in the 1500 metres in Rio in a couple of weeks' time. But for myself, Tolson Toller, and the rest of the team, till next time, bye for now. Ta-da.